Hi, welcome to today's video and part of a series that we're kind of doing this year, which is every month I'll be doing a video just reading a few new fantasy releases because I really, really want to make sure I'm actually just like having fun with my reading this year. And fantasy romance is one of those genres that, you know, I couldn't think of anything that describes fun more than it. Because while yes, some of them get very intense, some get emotional, a lot of them I just find kind of silly and fun and ridiculous. And you know what? This is, this is the vibe that we're having this year because I don't want to have any stress on my reading. I just want to have fun and enjoy the ridiculousness. So welcome to episode two of this year's series where we are reading some new fantasy romance releases. So all of these have come out within like the last few months. Some of them might have been out for a bit longer, but I do have five, li five books that we're going to be reading in today's video. Some of them are Kindle Unlimited, some are not. I'm just trying to mix it up by a variety of ways to get these books and I am really trying to make more use of my Kindle Unlimited subscription so that is why that is very much priority. But let's dive in, let's talk about first what five books we'll be reading. So first off I have When the Moon Hatched which is something about dragons that have left the planet and they like curled up in these like balls up in the sky as moons and then they all fell down. That's a terrible description, I haven't read it yet. I also don't know for sure if this is a fantasy romance but we're gonna read it anyway. So this is one. It has been on the top of the Kindle Unlimited charts for a few weeks now and obviously that has me very very intrigued. It also seems like we're following an assassin for this kind of, I don't know, I don't know if I'd say guild or association and a mercenary who's come to track them down. So that, that could be a romance. The next one we have is A River of Golden Bones and this is I believe about werewolf shifters and somebody, it's like a queen in hiding who after her 20th birthday comes out to claim her place on um, for a kingdom that has been taken by, overtaken by an evil sword. Dark Water Daughter is a, I'm gonna say sea witch, I don't think that's right, but it is somebody who has some kind of magical power related to the sea, and a pirate or a pirate hunter, can't tell which one, their romance as they are tracking down this evil pirate. The Ever King is a king who has been imprisoned in his castle for most of his life, and when he accidentally gets freed by his enemy's daughter, he then takes her prisoner, and it is a romance between the two of them. And finally we have House of Bane and Blood, which is a mafia fantasy romance. So we're in a magical town and we're fighting following two opposing families within this town. So I'm really really excited to get into these. Honestly have no idea how this is gonna go. I have a strong feeling that I'll like When the Moon Hatch just because of how popular it's been but to be honest I haven't really heard that much about the other ones so this could go anyway. So if you're interested in seeing how this goes, hearing a bit more about these books, please stay tuned. <laughs> So I decided to start with reading A River of Golden Bones and I'm gonna say like 40-ish percent into it right now and it's only kind of starting to make sense to me. Like it definitely started in a very weird spot and was very very confusing at first. But in this we are following twin sisters who are the last heirs to this wolf throne. So we're in a world where the royalty and the rulers of all of the different kingdoms are like wolf shifters and they rule over humans and other magical beings but there's like huge class divides between humans and shifters and everything but we're following the two secret heirs who basically it's been rumored for years that maybe they died maybe they survived because the night of their birth there was this evil sorceress who came into the kingdom and murdered the king and queen basically it was like incredibly covered up that the baby survived nobody even knew they were twins nobody knew that they lived so they've spent the last 20 years in this like remote village with their fairy god mother and just waiting until they come of age so they're able to go claim the throne. And part of that too is there is a betrothal to the prince of one of the other kingdoms. So the princesses are golden wolves, he's a silver wolf, they've always been at war, this is going to bring their kingdoms together. And it really <laughs> took me <laughs> way too long to try to piece that together and also come to the realization that this is a Sleeping Beauty retelling because it is very much like evil sorceress Maleficent comes in and like because of that the queen, like the um, royals panic and send their 
their kids into hiding and there's they live with the fairy godmother and there's like all these things saying that like the sorceress is able to enchant people into a like eternal sleep and this can only be awoken or these people in these internal sleeps can only be awoken by their true love so it took me way too long to get to that point where i realized that it was a sleeping beauty retelling and then suddenly things started to make sense so we in the book are following the perspective of the second sister so she is the second born and the first born is the one who basically has been primed her entire life to become queen that is her entire purpose basically she's betrothed to the prince and she has spent her whole life ready to be queen while the younger sister has spent her whole life training to be her guard and where we're at they are at this like palace with the rival wolves they're trying to like get things um like set up an agreement and like figure out things out with the king like you know all this stuff and then the sorceress comes and she puts the older sister under like a magical sleep and now we're following the younger sister who is trying to go on a mission to awake her sister and defeat this evil sorceress so honestly it kind of took to the point that the sister was like sent to a sleep thing that i realized that it was like beauty whatever <laughs> so that's where we're at i don't think i'm really liking this one that much i don't think it's really that great the writing isn't that spectacular it's um interesting per se but i think the world building is really not great the character building isn't great and i don't feel like things are being explained enough so it is okay so far but i really would not i really don't have that strong of feelings or hopes really for how this is gonna go So I finished reading A River of Golden Bones and I think overall this was just like a very okay book for me. Like it really didn't do anything that exceptional. It didn't end up being in too intriguing to like capturing anything. Like it was just very much an okay read. So I'm definitely gonna give this one like a three star where there was nothing overly wrong. Again like it just it was a three star. It was an okay book. It wasn't exciting. It wasn't terrible. It was just fine. And like I'm gonna reiterate again because this is a very common theme in a lot of books I read where three stars are completely fine. Really, really nothing wrong with them. Just it wasn't necessarily the book for me. And I think the biggest thing, like here I didn't love the writing and I don't feel like I ever felt any connection towards the characters. I don't feel like they were particularly well developed enough in a way like I didn't yeah I just didn't feel any connection any type of like really feeling towards them or anything that like made me want to care more about them and also in this one the world building was really I don't think all the way there and I do think that this is more of like I think this is going to be a series so from what I feel is that in other books this will be developed a lot more we'll get more of the world and stuff but in just this initial installation it just wasn't quite there the way I was hoping it would be and yeah I also I can say that I'm not gonna keep reading in this series because I really didn't care quite enough yeah so writing wasn't great and also just what I was saying at the beginning that I really really struggled to realize that this was Sleeping Beauty retelling and really like I don't know get a grasp of what was happening that's definitely like a downside to this book is that it took me that long to really understand exactly what was going on and really get a sense of the plot like that's not that's not a good sign for a book so it was fine just I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one if you're a fan of this author or like this type of story maybe but otherwise it was it was fine and I'm gonna be starting next on Dark Water Daughter so I am a little bit into it now and I'm already getting a bad sense of this one too because I'm also not jiving with the writing so in this one we're following a storm singer so we start off by yeah we're following a storm singer and she's basically this magical woman who's able to sing to like control the storms they've in recent times become kind of like enslaved to ship captains so if somebody finds out that a woman is a storm singer they very much just kidnap them and force them to be part of their crew because it's incredibly advantageous for any type of ship to have one like in this world it, i'm thinking like kind of victorian era is the type of um like setting vibe that i'm getting for this world where it's very like 
there's like um the queen's um navy there's pirates there's pirate hunters i guess like there's all these different people who are out on the sea all combatant all fighting each other so the storm singer is captured after um is captured and she's brought to like an auction where all of these other pirates come and everybody's trying to buy her to bring onto their ship and there is just like a lot of a lot of shit happening there's so many new so many random characters coming in i can't keep track of them and because all of them are pirates on different ships and they're all fighting different things and i really i'm really really struggling to keep these people all organized in my head but yeah so she's on one ship then she's on another then she's on another it's just like stuff like that that i'm really not following very well and we're following her point of view and also one of a pirate hunter and i don't really understand why we're following both of them i don't know what that is leading to but yeah so far it's <laughs> there's just like a lot again a lot of questions that i'm really not entirely sure what we're hap what's happening what we're following what the point of certain things is so i am hoping <laughs> that this will get better but so far it's really not doing much for me and yeah we're gonna also hope that this video i actually find some fantasy romances that i like because the last time i did this like new fantasy romance release vlog I did terrible. I had one four star, two threes, and two twos. So we're gonna hope that I find some hopefully, hopefully better stuff in this one around. So I'm done Dark Water Daughter. And guys, like it was just so boring. I yeah, yeah, this was boring. This was very, very this was very much not at all what I thought it would be. You know, we're following the book with like, oh, basically like somebody who has water magic and a pirate hunter and something about that made me think it would be like incredibly fun, incredibly action packed, just like full of fun pirate vibes. Like I was kind of hoping like Pirates of the Caribbean vibes. Those are fun. Those are super fun movies. But instead this was just so boring and I think it's just like the action wasn't really described in any way that made it sound interesting and just like everything it felt like it was resolved very very quickly so there was a lot of things happening but none of them were drawn out enough that you actually like felt the stakes felt interested felt like that worry of like oh how is it gonna go and yeah that just kind of like really really negatively impacted it for me and also the characters were just so incredibly two-dimensional like i don't think i could tell you a single thing interesting thing about what the main character's motivations were aside from like she was trying to stay alive but i know nothing else about her and same with like our male main character as well pretty much know nothing about him and it just really that obviously impacted me because i want to care about my characters like it i can't really get into a book that much if i don't feel anything for them and yeah they were just placeholders it felt like so really nothing about this was interesting also the lore the lore was so confusing so much of this book we're fighting against this one pirate and we're trying to hunt him down and like bring him down and stuff and there was this confusing lore about something that he's trying to do and i do did not get that at all i don't think any of it was well explained and yeah just it didn't didn't do it for me so you know what second book second bad writing I'm, i am gonna give this a three because i think it's gonna be it's not quite a two so it's like a 2.5 we're gonna round up to a three we're gonna be generous and it was okay <laughs> it was okay it just wasn't really that good and yeah you know here we are once again being disappointed truly my luck for these has been terrible and for some reason i'm feeling like i'm really reevaluating whether or not i actually like fantasy romance so but I am feeling, I'm feeling a little more hopeful about our next book, which is in The Ever King, just entirely based on a few of the ratings I've seen. I've seen more than one person talk about it online, and just having a few people saying they enjoyed it makes me a little more confident going into it. So I've started The Ever King and already I can just say that like immediately it is off to a great start. I'm just getting like a really really good vibe. So apparently this author had written like a nine book series before that like goes before this new series but you don't necessarily need to read that one because you do kind of get introduced to this world like all new characters and everything so you don't necessarily have to read that one at first apparently but now i'm kind of intrigued to go back to it just because i am really liking this world but we're following the princess of this one fake kingdom who has i guess her parents had been at war so she is the princess of this fake kingdom and her parents had been at war for i don't know 
know, years against this other kingdom and they had won. And the son of the king, of the old king, has basically vowed revenge on the um, this kingdom. Like he has vowed that he's going to find a way to make them suffer and stuff. So they had a connection. The two, the princess and new king, they apparently had met when they were children and there was some backstory where she gave him kindness and he, she was the only person who ever did. And it kind of led to this like connection between them. So, so because of this connection, she is like the one person who almost has like his blood in her. I don't know, something like that. I'm kind of confused. But there is this barrier to their realm that if she touches that when she touched accidentally or no she didn't she touched on purpose but i think she touched it with her blood something like that and when she touched it it brought down the barrier because it's one of these like the way of it is that it had to be somebody from this other kingdom or this king who brought it down or something but they have this connection i who knows and anyways this barrier came down so the ever king is able to come into this Earth fake kingdom and he comes in and kidnaps the princess and I'm really not far in at all but the princess has been kidnapped and she is on the king's like it kind of feels like a pirate ship <laughs> like he's for some reason seems to just be going around on like pirate ships not even ship but he's giving the piratey vibe and yeah right now she's just this prisoner and they're traveling through the seas to his kingdom and I'm really enjoying it I really really like the vibe of this one and I'm getting a good feeling a good feeling that there will be a good enemies to lovers romance. Also, I don't know if this is supposed to be more dark romance or not. If it is, I'm okay with that. So I'm, um, I'm about, what, like 60% into the Ever King now, and I am definitely enjoying it, like, insignificantly more than I was. It's this great enemies to lovers story because they are both, like, the heirs to these rival kingdoms, and there's been this, like, intense history between the kingdoms that has, like, been They've been in a lot of wars together throughout the years. And these two characters, they are just like inherently enemies. And it's very much like they are like their entire kingdoms like deeply hate each other. There's this deep rooted fight between them and all this stuff. And it's really interesting. And so enemies to lovers that ticks off a box for me. Then the first part of this, they are on the sea and this king basically has his own pirate ship with random, but okay. I guess it's not really pirate, but like, you know, marine something. So he's just off gallivanting the seas and not really, but he captures the princess and then they are on his pirate ship and going back to the capital of his kingdom. And I kind of like those vibes a lot. Like it was giving me much more than Darkwater Daughter because that one was just, it was confusing. I didn't really follow a lot of the whatever was happening but this one it just had like kind of fun piratey vibes and i'd say yeah definitely more fun and that was kind of i think the winning part of this is that it was just like kind of like a little sea adventure and they hate each other and they're just like doing their thing and i like that a lot and now they are in his kingdom and he basically to protect the princess has declared that she is his and it's this whole like he does this public ceremony so that this way nobody will like take advantage of her nobody will attack her nobody will harm her but you can really tell that like you know why would you do this for a prisoner unless you actually like kind of obsessed with them so he is doing this and you can tell there's kind of like the attraction is there and i'm liking that i'm liking that he's already giving these like touch her and you die vibes but so my only thing that I'm going to complain about is that I thought this was going to be a bit of a darker romance and like it has so many things that I really really like. I just wish that it really got into this like you know captor captive hatred a little bit more. I think that would have worked a little bit better so far for me and I hope maybe maybe we do in later part because so far they just seem to be very much vibing with each other and very happy and like just kind of like you know I'm still be your prisoner but but you're not a terrible person and like let me find a way to get our kingdoms to work together. So I kind of wish there was just like a little bit more hatred, tension, something Thing, but I'm definitely enjoying this a lot. Okay, so I finished Darkwater Daughter. Nope, I finished The Ever King. Okay, so I finished The Ever King and I like this a lot. I really, really enjoyed this one and I think I'm gonna give it a four star. It, like, obviously it wasn't 100% perfect. Like, I wasn't obsessed with it to the level that, like, I need a four or five star, but I think this was a very, very solid, like, fantasy romance book. My main complaints were, like, kind of similar to what I was saying before, where I feel like we could have really gotten, like, maybe a bit darker 
in this and I think that would have like really brought an interesting aspect to this book. I think they were just like oh everyone's just a little too cool with everything that was going on and a little bit too happy with like oh I'm your prisoner okay I'm fine with that. So I just wanted maybe like a little bit more tension a little bit more fighting a little bit more of that like you know like internal conflict of like oh I like this guy but 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 he's my enemy and just kind of like working around that a little bit more. Bowers really liked it. The sequel is out for this so I'm definitely I think I'm gonna pick this up probably next month and I am now really curious to go back and read the series before it because there are like you didn't need to read it at all I don't think but there's a lot of hints about like the history of certain things and like stuff that happened and all of these characters like the older generation are talked about which I'm assuming is what that series follows so I kind of really do want to go back and read that maybe and take a look and see because yeah this was pretty good and the world was interesting because it has like so the earth fae is where our princess is from and then I can't remember the name but it's a different type of fae <laughs> so there's like really this like earth magic versus I think it's the ever it's the ever kingdom but I can't remember what they called their fae but they have like different types of magic different like associations different like just very different things that are natural within their kingdom I guess and it would be really interesting to see a lot more of that history because I am guessing that they dive so much more into it into the other series so I do think I'm gonna pick that up and yeah pretty happy with that so we're gonna give this one a four star I think that pretty great if you like the enemies to lovers if you like captor captive a little a little bit of that fae stuff like it worked it worked worked for me for sure and feeling pretty good. I feel like this <laughs> just the fact that I actually have a four star read again is making me very happy and I feel like this is already making this video go off on a better note than it did the last time I did this so this is good. This is great. We let's keep these energy let's keep this energy and these vibes going for the next two books. Hi we have many things to discuss actually just two but we have things to discuss. So you know I was feeling really really good about this video. The last read was a four star. I was feeling like you know we've hit our stride we are starting to get somewhere and then I started to read when the moon hatched and it was not it I really did not like it like to the point that I have unfortunately DNF'd it I'll just share that I have my little buddy with me as always um but yeah I got 40 ish percent in and <laughs> could not could not keep going so this is a fantasy world where it was like really really complex and poorly explained but there were all of these moons in the sky and all of these moons are like a dragon that is in its egg or something and they fall down to earth and hatch and there's a step so we are following in the story a young woman who she's part of this guild and i would kind of say like a mercenary like she does these missions um sometimes they involve killing people sometimes other other stuff but it sounds like she's pretty much like a mercenary for hire and she gets captured by the law and brought into this plot and there's this whole thing where one of the kings of one of the kingdoms gets involved and basically rescues her and from there she where i left off they were going off on an adventure together to do something and i just really really couldn't get into it i felt like the writing just everything was very poorly explained and this is a world that has like a deep lore a deep mythology all of this stuff and none of it was explained to the point that like I could actually really know what was happening like there's all these gods there's all these like god-given magics all of this stuff and the only way I was kind of following even like remotely was looking at the glossary and like I don't want to I don't want that I want to be able to actually understand through the book itself okay he is there's a tiny spot that he has to sit next to yeah so I like I wanted things actually to be explained within the book and it just wasn't at all so and yeah I couldn't follow it couldn't care about the characters it really seemed like it was going to be leading up to like a romance between the this king and our female main character and like where i was leading off things were starting to get spicy and it was just like kind of from nowhere like there's major major enemies to lovers vibes but just there was no build-ups and that's something that i really need it just felt kind of out of nowhere kind of uninteresting and i didn't want to keep going i could already tell that like even just this much of the book i was dragging my feet to get through and really really like not wanting to read so 
I was having a bad feeling about going forward and didn't want to do it. So unfortunately this one's a DNF, which doesn't feel great. And especially seeing that it's like, it's number one on the Kindle Unlimited store and has been for a bit now. So I feel like I am the one who is missing something. I am the one who is like not a, who's just like not clicking. And maybe it is for a bunch of other people, but yeah, not for me. And then after that, I have started House of Bane and Blood, which will be the last book for the studio. And this one, it is is like being set up as a Peaky Blinders retelling, kind of like a mafia romance in a fantasy-esque world. So I'll just straight up say I've never seen Peaky Blinders, so that means nothing to me. But I, and I also haven't really read that many mafia romances, so that is also something that maybe I can't necessarily compare this to. But where we're setting off is we're following this one woman and her family. They are, they own this railroad that I think can controls like a bunch of the imports, exports of this like island that they live on. And then we're following Halloween. Our mailman character is basically the head of like this crime family. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. His family has magic, hers doesn't, but they are kind of like the head of like the underground something and they're this really like dangerous family but so they agreement comes into place for them to get married and they are their families have pretty much set it up where this agreement they'll get married and it like is benefiting because her family is very broke at the moment and his family wants access to this railroad so they're both benefiting quite a bit but it is like major major enemies to lovers major like marriage of convenience thing and i'm enjoying it so far it's definitely like an interesting kind of urban urban-esque fantasy story. I'm just really interested in the magic, the characters, like everything that's going on, which feels like a really good sign. It's just, I'm just really interested in it. The characters themselves, they seem interesting enough and yeah, it's just like a cool world. I'm enjoying this one quite a bit so far. I do have a really good feeling that it will be interesting. So I'm gonna keep going on this one, but yeah, I'm getting a really good feeling so far, which is always great. So we have one very big thing to talk about now, which is that I finished House of Pain and Blood. And kind of like I I was saying previously i really enjoyed this i really thought it was fun like it wasn't anything too unexpected in that it was very much like the enemies to lovers you know there's going to be conflict there marriage of convenience you can you know there's going to be that conflict but the world itself was interesting enough and yeah there really wasn't I didn't have a lot of surprises going like with what was happening, but everything that did happen was super fun. And yeah, it was just, I really liked the characters. I liked the world. I liked what was going on. So we're going to give this one a four star and I'm so, so happy about it. Just this one overall really, really did it. And it left on a very big cliffhanger. So I'm actually really, really excited to get to the next book in the series, which feels fantastic again that I really found another book that I actually really enjoyed. And yeah, I'm not going to say too much more about this one. Just, I don't know. Like, I don't really know what else to say, I guess. Like, I feel like I talked a bit more about the world building and the magic and stuff before. But yeah, just it continued on in this enemies to lovers kind of thing. So with that, I think, unless I'm mistaken, we have four or three four-star reads out of this video. I think so. I think so. Which feels amazing. It feels so, so good. Definitely a lot better than the last time I did one of these new fantasy romance release videos because I think that one, I came out with like mostly three and two stars. So this one's fantastic. Again, one DNF, but I'm fine with that. And I really don't understand, like I'm seeing so many people who have loved When the Moon Hatched online and I just, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. I don't, I don't see why people would be that into it. It just, it did nothing for me. So I don't know, but yeah, definitely that one was not for me. And I'm super excited to continue on with the series for some of these, like The Ever King, the sequel The Ever Queen is out right now. So I'm probably going to get to that pretty soon. And then yeah, as soon as the sequel to House of Bane and Blood comes out, I'm grabbing that right away. So this was incredibly successful and I'm just so, so happy with how this went. So thank you for sitting here and watching all of this with me. Um, if you haven't already, I'd love if you would consider subscribing, liking this video, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.